Today with the King is a 3ABN Australia television production developed to teach children about the Sabbath and to lead them through a study of the Bible. Remember to download your weekly study guide at adaywiththeking.com. So come on kids, join us now and each week for A Day with the King. I'm Auntie Nat. It's great that you could all join us to meet with the King. Come and join our worship time together. Hello, Auntie Cecily. It's great to see you here with us. Hello, children. It's great that you could come and worship the King. And hello, Teddy. I'm glad that you could come as well. Auntie Cecily, would you like to say a prayer for us, please, before we worship the King? Yes. Dear Father, thank you for the many blessings that you have given us all through the week. And thank you for the opportunity to spend the Sabbath with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Do you know, this is a great time that we can reflect on our blessings that God has sent us this past week. Elijah, have you got something that God has done for you? Yes. (coughs) Well, well, we were going to um, the beach with our friends for a picnic. And then I burnt my finger in um, hot water. And then we and then we went to the beach and I was praying while I was in the bathroom that God would help me heal my finger so I would have a fun day. And then we while we were going for a walk on the beach, my pain just eased off like that. Thanks, Elijah, for sharing that with us. Auntie Cecily, you have something to share with us as well about the Sabbath. Yes. Just as it's a blessing to be obedient, as we will discuss in our study later on, So it's a blessing to keep the Sabbath. God blessed the Sabbath day and sanctified it. We've studied about that in Genesis 2. Mm. So if God placed a special blessing on the Sabbath, we will be blessed if we keep it. Isaiah 58 verses 13 and 14 tells us just that. The Sabbath is to be a delight, not a drudgery. Mm. God loves us so much that he sent his son Jesus to leave his heavenly home and to dwell on this earth and to teach us how to live. Jesus died on the cross for our sins Mm. so that we can live eternally with him in heaven. What an amazing thing Jesus did for us. Spending the Sabbath with him and getting to know him is a way we can express our love and gratitude for what he did for us. Mm. And if that's our attitude, the Sabbath will be a blessing and a delight. Mm. Praise God. Thank you, Arnie Cecily. That's terrific. Do you know another way that we can worship God is in song? And we have Pastor Rick here. Thanks, Pastor Rick. Hi, boys and girls. We're going to sing another song about the Sabbath called My Sabbaths You Shall Keep. My Sabbath you shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations that you may Sing soon and very soon. Great song. Let's try it. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Hallelujah. No. 
Jesus' name above all names? Yes. Jesus, name above all names, beautiful Savior, glorious Lord, Emmanuel, God is with us, blessed Redeemer. Thanks, Pastor Rick. It's great to praise God in song. We discovered a blessing at Sunnyside this week. Kate, will we share that with the children at home? Yes. Okay, let's go. Hello, boys and girls. My name is Dr. John Hammond. Welcome to the Australian home of Mrs. Ellen White. Come with me. I've got some stories to tell you. Ellen loved living at Sunnyside. This was her favorite place. It had taken a long time to build, but you know, she got many invitations to go away and preach. Even though she was very weak, God gave her strength every time she got up the front. They didn't have planes, didn't have buses, didn't have cars, but she used to go by train. And one day she caught the train from Dora Creek went to Sydney and all the way down to Melbourne. It took her all day and night. And the people at the North Fitzroy Church were so excited because Mrs. White was coming. They got there early. They were the mums and dads, they were the boys and girls at the front. And when the time came to start the meeting, the elders were dressed up looking rather important. Black coats and their Bibles under their arms. And they all marched up and they stood on the platform and everybody was looking. Where's Alan? She wasn't there. The train was late. And the elder said, well, brothers and sisters and boys and girls, uh, Alan's not here yet and she won't be here for two hours and we're going to have to sing some songs. And they sang every song they could think of. Somebody told some stories and they were looking at their watches and Alan hadn't come. And finally the train arrived and in came this little lady in black, so small and she stood up to speak. Everybody went quiet. They had never heard her voice before. But when she stood up, her eyes were looking like that. Then she leaned forward, she opened her mouth, but no sound came out. Now if I got up in church in front of you, I opened my mouth to speak and no sound, it'd be very embarrassing and people would say, what, what's wrong with Ellen? Is she sick? Is she having a fit? And she started to look around. She tried to speak again. No sound. She was looking for somebody. Then she turned around and she looked at the five men behind her and the one on the end when she saw him for the first time she spoke, you know what she said? The most frightening words that man had ever heard. She said, what is that man doing here? He went all red. He rushed off the stage, up the aisle, slammed the door, and he went home. And then she talked. 
and she talked for a long time. And when she was finished, she said to Pastor Daniels, I want you to go to that man's house. His name is Mr. Davis, and I will write a letter. And they went to the house, and when they got there, Mr. Davis was shaking. He was very frightened. And Elder Daniel started to read the letter. And every time it mentioned Jesus' name, Mr. Davis got angry, and he got so angry, he grabbed a knife. And he pulled it out. It was a dagger. He said, Don't you mention Jesus' name. What would you do if you were really frightened like that? Well, they knelt down quickly. And when he mentioned Jesus' name, he took the knife and he flung it across the room. And then he started to cry. And then he admitted that he was in spiritualism and the devil had his heart. He said, pray for me, please. I want the devil to go out of my life. And he did. He became a strong friend. And when Ellen left the country, years later, she collected a whole lot of autographs. And Mr. Davis wrote in her autograph book, and this is what he wrote. I have every reason to be positive in my confidence in Sister Ellen G. White as a true prophet. And Ellen was able through Jesus to reach a man whose heart had been taken by the devil and he became a soul for Christ and Jesus was able to use him. Isn't that a great story? Thank you. Hi boys and girls, happy Sabbath. Welcome to our Bible study. If you haven't got your Bibles ready yet, go get them now so that you can follow along with us. Auntie Cecily, can you please say a prayer for us before we open our Bibles? Yes. Dear God, thank you for our Bibles. Please be with us as we study your word and please help the boys and girls to understand what we read today. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Do you remember what we studied about last week? The The armour armour of God. God. The armour of God and how Satan fell from heaven and what God asks us to put on to protect us from Satan. Well done. Let's look at the story of Cain and Abel today and how sin and disobedience cause a lot of pain for Adam and Eve. Liam, you've got our first verse today. Would you like to read that in Genesis 4 verse 1? Now Adam knew Eve, his wife, And she conceived and bore Cain and said, I have acquired a man from the Lord. Mm. So Adam and Eve had left their garden home and Eve had her first baby and his name was Cain. Now she thought that this was the promised Messiah that God had spoken to them about in the Garden of Eden, but was it Jesus? No. No. It wasn't. He came thousands of years later. Okay, Ella, can you please read Genesis 4 too? Then she bore again, this time his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Ain was a tiller of the grounds. Mm. So who was Cain? What did he do? A tiller. The tiller, tiller of the ground. Sheep. And Abel, he a kept sheep. he was a shepherd, yes, he kept the sheep. Yes. Okay, Elijah, can you please read verse three to five of Genesis four, please? And in that process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of fruit to the, of the ground to the Lord. Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat. And the Lord respected Abel and his offering, but he did not respect Cain and his offering. And Cain was very angry and his counten- countenance fell. Mm. So the boys, I think, have been tested for their obedience and faith for God. Where else have we heard about a test Where else did that happen that we've just studied about? In the Garden of Eden, Eden, yes. So um, God has asked them to bring an offering. And what's happened? What did we just read? He accepted Abel's, not Cain's. Yeah, that's right. Let's read our torchlight, Auntie Cecily. This sacrifice would lead them to continually keep in mind their sin and the Redeemer to come, who was to be the great sacrifice for man. Mm. 
So by bringing a lamb offering, which God asked them to do, that was to remind them that Jesus was going to come and to this earth and he was going to die for our sins. But what did Cain bring? Fruit. He fruit. brought fruit. And did God want him to bring fruit? No. No, he wanted him to bring a lamb. So was Cain obedient? No. He wasn't obedient. He was disobedient. That's right. Okay, now do you think Cain was angry? Yes. yes. He was angry. Okay, Kate, can you read Genesis 4, 6 to 7, please? So the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry? And why has your countenance fallen? If you do well... Will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin lies at your door and its desire is for you, but you should rule over it. Mm. Do you know God loves us so much that he gives us every chance to repent. We just read in the Bible that God spoke to Cain. He even sent an angel to speak to him. Do you know that Cain knew what he was doing? Adam and Eve had talked to them about what happened in the Garden of Eden and he knew that he had to bring a lamb, not fruit. They knew that Christ was going to come in the future to die for their sins. And even God and the angel came to try and reason with Cain and to change his mind. But I don't think that happened. Okay, Nick, can you please read Genesis 4, 8 for us? Now Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and killed him. Wow. So even Abel tried to reason with Cain. But did Cain want to listen? No. No, he was cross at his, old, his younger brother for being obedient. What did that verse just say? Who did Cain kill? Abel. Abel. Abel, his brother, yes, because he didn't want to bring the offering that God asked him to bring. Do you think that's a bit of the eye disease that we spoke about, about yep. Satan? Satan wanted to do what he wanted to do. And what did Cain do? Cain was the same, wasn't he? Yeah. He wanted to bring what he wanted to bring, not what God wanted him to bring. Okay, Sarah, can you read for us Genesis 4, 9 to 10? Then the Lord said to Cain, Where is Abel your brother? He said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? And he said, What have you done? The voice of your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. Mm, so God knew what Cain had done. Can we hide anything from God? No. no, no, we can't. And God gave Cain every opportunity to confess his sin and to reflect on what he'd done. But sadly, he didn't. Auntie Cecily, can you please read Genesis 4, verse 11 to 12? So now you are cursed from the earth, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you till the ground, it shall no longer yield its strength to you. Mm. A fugitive and a vagabond, you shall be on the earth. Mm. So God placed a curse on Cain, but his mercy, God's so merciful. He didn't allow anyone to kill Cain because you know what? God still wanted him to repent. But the earth would no longer provide as many blessings to him as before. He would always be a vagabond or a homeless wanderer. He would always wander the earth. Do you think it's a blessing to be obedient? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it is. God wants us to do what he wants us to do, not what we want to do. It's important that we do what God wants us to do. There is a promise in the Bible, and let's all turn to that and read that together. It's found in Jeremiah 7.23. We all turn to that and read that together. This is important for us to know. We ready? But this, this is what I commanded them, saying, Obey my voice, and I will be your God, and you shall be my people, and walk in all your ways that I have commanded you, that it may be well with you. Wow. So God says if we obey him, He'll be with us and everything will go well. That's a great promise, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. 
Thank you, boys and girls, for sharing your time with us in reading the Bible. Ask God today to help you be obedient and do the will of God, not doing only what you want to do. God wants us to be happy and he knows what is best for us. Next Sabbath, we are going to study about what happened to our earth because of sin. And we will study about a very faithful, obedient man. Can you guess who that was? Have a look in your Bibles. When we choose to keep the Sabbath, it can be a great blessing in our lives. Every time we read our Bibles, we can be blessed and God can open new truths to us. We want to encourage you to read your Bibles, not only on the Sabbath day, but every day. Auntie Nat, would you tell us about the devotional that relates to our study today? Yes, I'd love to. We have a seven day devotional study available on Cain and Abel. We study that together today. This expands on what we have learnt. You can download it and print it free from our website, which is on your screen. This will help you to read your Bible every day and spend time to getting to know God. Auntie Cecily, will we go over our memory verse now that we yes. learnt today? Let's do that. Are you ready to say it all together? <laughs> Jeremiah 7:23. But this is what I commanded them, saying, Obey my voice, and I will be your God, and you shall be my people, and walk in all the ways that I have commanded you, that it may be well with you. Auntie Nat, are you ready to sing our blessing song yes. to the children? Yes, let's okay. do that. Days I like to go to the park and spend time with my family and listening to nature. On Sabbath, I like spending time with my friends and listening to the sermon and having lunch together. You have been listening to a production of 3AB in Australia Television. God bless you, kids. Remember to join us next week. Mm-hmm.